What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I want to show you guys P-Fetch. So a couple years back I did a video on NeoFetch, which is an information tool that a lot of people install, especially when they're showing off their desktop environment. A lot of times people want to see the hardware or let's say you want to see the desktop environment that a person is using as well as the fonts and just basic system information that's displayed within a terminal for anyone to see. So you could duplicate what that person did with the desktop environment. And I wanted to show you guys PFetch today because it's a smaller utility. It doesn't have as much bloat in it and it's basically a bash shell script. And it will pull systems information just like NeoFetch and display it within the terminal. And this one is super cool, just like NeoFetch. But let's go on and hop over to the terminal right fast so I can show you guys how to install it. So today I'll use Arch Linux as the distribution that we will install PFetch on. And this system is already up to date. It has the XFCE desktop. And if we open up the terminal, as you can see, it doesn't have a information gathering tool or display tool installed on it because most people, when they install it, they'll add it to their bash or C file and set it up so that as soon as you open up the terminal, it'll display the system's information. And before I do the install, I wanted to show you guys the actual website for PFetch so you can install it on any other distribution. Uh, you can basically just get clone the actual repository and then install it on the system. It's, it's very simple to install, but this is a screenshot of what it actually looks like. And as you can see, it's a little bit simpler than NeoFetch. NeoFetch pulls a whole lot more information for the system, which I really don't like. So I actually changed mine up to PFetch. I used to use NeoFetch, but PFetch is a little bit more cleaner and it just kind of gets right straight to the point. And if we scroll down a little bit more on the website, it goes through and show you guys the configuration for it. So you can modify the configuration as needed. Uh, I recommend you check out the documentation, but as you can see right here, it's supported on most Linux distributions. As you can see, uh, it's a whole bunch of them listed there as well as Android, uh, BSD. Well, no, nothing under Android, but BSD, uh, but Windows subsystem for Linux. So you can install it on there as well. And of course, uh, Mac OS, Solaris, you know, and a couple other distributions out there are Linux based distributions that are out there. Now let's go back to the virtual machine so I can show you guys how to install it. And like I said, we're installing this on Arch. And one thing with Arch, once you start using Arch, you'll understand that they have what they call the Arch user repository, where there are plenty of packages that are community built and community uploaded and maintained by the Arch community. That's why they call it the Arch user repository where you can get software and install it on your system. And in order to get something from the AUR install, you can download it directly or you can use a, a AUR helper. And the one that I prefer is Yay, which is what I'll show you guys how to install now. And I'm, sh I'm not sure what's, uh, what's installed on this system. So I'm finna check to make sure we have Git installed so we can actually install a package, but dash S and then Git and let's install it a Git package right fast or the actual Git command. And I need to type in my password again. I think I typed it in wrong. Yeah, so yeah, I did type it in wrong. So we got to type it in again, boom. And we can go down and get Git installed on the system. And it's a very short, you know, package. So we're good to go. Now let's go down in a uh, CD to our op directory right fast. And I apologize for that. I forgot the uh, forward slash. So the op directory, press enter. And we don't have to LS it, but, and on the AUR package, or on the package, if you go to the user repository or the Arch user repository, they do have the package link there. And, and basically all you have to do is copy it down, but I'm using a virtual machine, so I'm gonna have to type it all in, but sudo git clone, and then we can type in the URL, which is not that long, so it shouldn't take me 
too long to type it in, but aur.orchlinux.org and then forward slash uh, yay. And I believe the package is, we'll get the git package. So yay git dash git dot git and press enter and that'll clone down yay for us and then we can get it installed right fast and let's change the ownership now to our user account which is josh so let's go sudo uh, ch own and then dash or and that uh, that means for recursive capital or and then our user accounts as well as our user group and then we can go dot forward slash and then type in uh yay dash get and i tabbed it out so let's press enter and that'll get that'll give the permissions or the ownership to the git repository that's local on our system in the op directory because the op directory is owned by root that's why we had to use sudo git to actually download the package down to that location now let's go into that directory right fast and we can actually make the package and I'm not sure if that's installed on here, but we all, we all you have to do is type make package and then dash SI and press enter. And that'll actually make the package. I hope all the tools are on here. They should be on here and it'll go through and actually make the package. But this is something that I typically do to a new system and I'll automatically have this installed on the system before I start installing a bunch of packages from the AUR. So I'll be back when this actually completes because sometimes it takes a little time. All right, cool. So we are actually done installing. Yay. So now we can go through and install PFetch. But first thing I want to do is run a refresh at a repository. So let's write type yay and then dash capital S Y U lowercase Y U and press enter. And it should check the community repository, which we have access to now. And this makes it super simple to install applications from the AUR. So now let's go down and install PFetch, like I was saying. So yay. Uh, and then I'll, you basically run the command just like you would run the Pac-Man command. It works pretty much the same. So a lot of the options are pretty much the same. So yay space dash capital S and then the package that we want to install, which is PFetch. And then we could just tab it out or we should be able to tab it out and i'm sure that's the package name so i'm gonna just go down and press enter and that'll go find that package and they have both options you can get the git package or you can get the regular package and i'm just install the default package uh and shouldn't take too long like i said this aur helper is so simple you know it asks you if you want to look at the differences between, you know, build files that already exist. But I'm going to type capital N for none. I don't want to see the differences. And it'll go through and install the packages from there. The package from there. As you can see, that was super simple. So it's done. Now, the next thing we could do is actually add pfetch to our bash rc file but let me clear right fast or clear the screen and let's actually run it so you guys can see but pfetch press enter and as you can see it pulls up this system information so os orch linux you know standard pc and basically the information you know the kernel uptime uh packages as well as memory usage so as you can see it's very simple you know it's a simple amount of information that it puts out there for you and also, I like the way this actually looks, you know what I'm saying? Uh, with NeoFetch, it looks a little bit slightly different, but this looks cooler in my opinion. And like I said, you can configure this or modify this if you want to. There are options or ways to configure it, but I'm going to just leave the defaults. And that's the way I have it on my, my main machine. Now, let's go to my bash or C file right fast. And all we had to do is go nano and then dot bash rc and press enter now open up our bash rc file and if we go down to the bottom and one thing i typically do is add notes when i make changes to my bash rc so all you have to do is uh type the pound sign or hashtag sign which is what you guys use nowadays or what you call it nowadays and then put some notes in there of what exactly this is and this is run pfetch and all we got to do is type pfetch as that command and that'll run pfetch 
every single time we open up the terminal so let's go down and save this right fast uh so save boom and now if we exit out and let's just open it back up as you can see pfetch runs every time it'll run every single time we open up the terminal each time we open it up and that's exactly how you do it with neofetch as well you just basically add it to your bash or c file and anytime you open up the terminal it'll open up that actual command or run that command and fetch the systems information so i hope you guys enjoyed the video go on and check out pfetch fetch is very simple to install i kind of took a long route by showing you guys how to install yay which is one of the aur package managers but if you look at how long it actually took to install pfetch it didn't take long at all it's a super simple systems information tool that i think you guys will enjoy if, especially if you work in a terminal a lot by getting that system information and displaying it on the screen anytime you open up the terminal so please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave comments down in the comments below. And of course, keep it techie.